Don't Action. Know. Right. Once upon a time, there was two people who went on an event who went on an adventure to Disneyland. However, it wouldn't go right for the right reasons. One of them, they headed in the wrong direction. One of the suspects, Benjamin O'Keefe, headed in, headed the wrong direction. And the French authorities were on the lookout for him. It would be very unclear where he might have gone. No one knew where they went. It would remain a mystery what could have happened to Benjamin O'Keefe. Could Benjamin O'Keefe have been taken from the apartment? The police did door to door inquiries. It would yet be unclear as to what went on later that evening. The friend Kevin O'Marshall spoke to the media and tried to give his version, his version of events. He was unsure as to what could have happened to his friend. He was confused as to what might have happened. There were a lot of rumours circulating as what might have happened until the inquiries were done. No one knew as to what happened to Benjamin O'Keefe. It was a real mystery. What, who could have done this to Benjamin O'Keefe? There is speculation that Benjamin O'Keefe could have been taken to another country. He could have been deported to another country. He has been missing for some time. There was a real concern with his family. They didn't know as to what might have happened to their son. The police spoke and they said the investigation was ongoing, but the police so f but the police Yeah, it was ongoing but everything so far. Yeah, the police spoke and they said the investigation was ongoing, but everything so far was really good and they were very hopeful in the next couple of weeks they can find Benjamin O'Keefe and reuniting with his family and his friend. Later that evening Kevin O'Marshall went to play some darts with his family. Kevin O'Marshall went back to the apartment and he discovered something which might be a clue in the investigation. It was not yet clear whether this was the body of Benjamin O'Keefe, but Kevin O'Marshall looked to find something which might be able to find might be able to help the police or in their investigation. Kevin O'Marshall still thinks that Benjamin O Keith is still alive, but the locals in Paris City Centre think that he might have disappeared. It was a nervous time for the family and friends of Benjamin O'Keefe, who was last seen going on the, on the metro with Kevin O'Marshall, and then there was there was rumours that a gang might have taken Benjamin, Benjamin O'Keefe away. If that is true, then that is a real concern. No one yet no one yet knows what the situation is yet with Benjamin O'Keefe. As the police did more inquiries, it remains to be seen if they can find any evidence. The next day the police finished their investigation and Benjamin O'Keefe would be out with his family and Kevin and Marshall. The next day Benjamin O'Keefe and Kevin and Marshall they would have a walk in the city centre of pa Paris. Benjamin O'Keefe got put in a car and then he got attacked but luckily for him he managed to survive and then he got reunited with his family and his friend. The next day the two of them they went to the shop and bought a chocolate milkshake. A chocolate milkshake. They, they, they then went up the Eiffel Tower and had a really good time. They were on their family holiday and they were from Plymouth. They were aged between Zvanzig, Zvanzig Zwei and Zvanzig Undry. 22 <laughs> and 23. Late that afternoon they went to buy some food from the local shop in the city centre. And they decided they would go back to Disneyland. And this time it would go right for the right reasons. They queued up and they bought a ticket for the day to go on all the rides before the theme park closed for the day. The next day they went on the sorry, they went they went to an internet cafe. They paid to use the internet to talk to their friends back in England. The next day they packed the suitcases to fly back to England. Back to Manchester Airport. And then they caught the train back to Plymouth. Later that afternoon they arrived back into Plymouth. And the two friends made their own way home when they arrived their own houses. Arrived to their own houses with their families, they realised that they had both been targeted. They had been burgled while they were on holiday in France. Who could have done this? How did this occur? They realised something was wrong when they entered the house. Yeah, they saw some broken glass and they realised, and then they realised there was some items stolen. The next day, when they, when the glass was swept, they found nine nine nine. They found nine nine nine, and the police spoke to both families, and there was a man who was on the run who might have done this. Mohammed Al Fahid could have could be the this could this be the man who broke into both homes and took some important things. The next day the police won the hunt for this man. They saw a man driving away and the and so the police arrested the man who broke into the homes of the families. Homes of the families. It was not yet clear how long he would have in prison. It would remain to be seen how long Mohammed Al Fahid would get in prison. The next day Mohammed Al Fahid appeared in court and he would learn how long he would be in fa facing in prison. Judge Scott Wright would hear from the witness box, and he would also hear from the other people in this in the box before Scott Wright made his decision. Later that afternoon, Scott Wright wanted time to have a think about it before deciding how long to give Mohammed Al Fahid in prison for burglary. The next day, they went back into court, and Judge Scott Wright asked Mohammed Al Fahid to stand up. 
Muhammad Al Fahid was given a life sentence in prison with, prison with a minimum of 38 years. The police put Muhammad Al Fahid in his prison cell and the families could move on in their own lives. The next day, back in Plymouth, Kevin and Marshall and Benjamin O'Keefe, they could move on with their lives with Muhammad Al Fahid behind bars in prison in London, sorry. The next day, Kevin and Marshall and Benjamin, and Benjamin O'Keefe went to a local church. With quite dramatic circumstances, there was some terrorists. It targeted the church Faisal Al Jahid Jal Jal Al Jamid Hector Al Hector Al Mahid Sami El Hayid, but they were quickly detained by the police. They were quickly arrested, and they would get and they would get life sentence for terrorism. The next day, the two of them they went to a restaurant in Plymouth. When in quite dramatic circumstances, the restaurant was so was full, so they looked elsewhere to see what to see what restaurants were available and they went to an Italian restaurant which had some spaces so they sat down at the yeah. table and had a pizza yeah. with chips at the side. They both ordered a jug of tap water without any ice and then for dessert they would have a chocolate brownie and then they got the bill later that evening they returned to their houses they went to sleep because they had both they so they both had university tomorrow at the University of Plymouth. The next day they got up and had their breakfast before they were made their own way to the University of Plymouth, where they were studying chemistry. They was they were doing a five year course at Plymouth late that afternoon. There was a scare in the university. It seemed to be a fire, but it was not known how the fire started, but all the students went outside and waited for the all clear. The students were given all the were given the all clear and they could resume their lectures later afternoon they had their lunch. <coughs> their lunch went in quite quite dramatic circumstances. There was a Polish student who was making really bad remarks to the two of them. And they went and got a member of staff and he kicked the Polish student out of the University of Plymouth. He was not allowed to come back, he had failed his course. Later that evening they did some university work at the library before later going back to their own homes. The next day the two of them the next day the two of them had a job interview at Lavish. The manager Joseph Kelly wanted to see if they were both suitable to work for him as bar staff would remain to be seen whether Joseph Kelly would offer the, them the job to work at Lavish. They would await the phone call and see whether Joseph Kelly would give them a job at Lavish. The next day Kevin and Marshall and Benjamin O'Keefe would receive a phone call on their phone. Joseph Kelly offered them the job and they would start the evening at Lavish. Start that evening, sorry, at Lavish. Later that evening, Kevin and Marshall and Benjamin O'Keefe, they started their shift at Lavish. They seemed to see, they seemed to see some fighting and alerted the security guards who threw the people out who were fighting Lavish. The following day, they went shopping when they saw a gang of youths who were targeting them for no reason. They, so they just ignored them and did not listen to them. Later that afternoon, they decided to go swimming in the sea off the coast of Plymouth. But the weather was not suitable to go swimming in the sea, so they decided instead they would have a pint in the pub before late going home to, the set, to settle down for the night. They received a knock on the door as they were settling down for the night. They decided not to answer the door as they knew it was someone who was targeting them. So instead they phoned the police. They didn't want them in. They didn't want them to get in and take any of their belongings like the laptop, which they need to do with their university work. The police would later, they would arrest the suspects who tried to get in their home the next day. They were going to the lectures and then they would go to work in the evening. So they had a, so they had, so they had a very busy day. Later that evening, later that day, I beg your pardon, they would get charged before they would, they would get changed before they would meet, and they would take the bus and arrive at Lavish, where they would work until two a.m. Two, two o'clock in the morning, two a.m. in the morning. The next day, they would go swimming in the sea, and, and with the weather brightening up, they swam in the sea. They then they decided they would go to the amusements and go to the arcade before later they would return home and do their university work. That needed to be handed in the next day. They went to university and handed their handed in their dissert dissertation. When, which they which they did the day before, the teachers seemed very happy with the work that they did. They had done so. And they would take their work home to Mark, and they would give them the work back once they had marked the work. They wanted to see if everything was okay with the work that they had given their teacher, who was named Sean Wilkinson, who was thirty two who teach chemistry later that evening, their parents, Jordan O. Marshall, Bev O. Marshall, who were the parents of Kevin O. Marshall and Ben O'Keefe, and Megan O'Keefe, who were the parents of Benjamin O'Keefe. They both had three brothers and two 
sisters who were studying at the University of Manchester. They only went back out to Plymouth in the holidays. They were aged between 24 and 25. Late that afternoon, Jordan and Marshall played some golf with Kevin and Marshall and Ben, ben O'Keefe and Benjamin O'Keefe. They would go paintballing. Before they had they had chicken curry for tea, Kevin and Marshall would have chili con carne for his tea. The next day, Kevin and Marshall would learn his, that would learn that his granddad would be in the hospital. Jezo Marshall, Kevin and Marshall would go in the hospital in the city centre in Plymouth to see how his granddad was getting on. He tried to speak to his granddad, but he was not speaking. It would be unclear. Jezo Marshall would wake up. He was not responding. This seemed a very serious illness. There was some real concern with the family. It was worrying for Jezo Marshall's family because they are all very close. The next day, the two of them they would watch deep. They would de they, they would watch Deadpool at the cinema before going out for a nice Indian curry at the curry at the curry house. The end. Sam Jenkinson. I'm, right, I'm stopping. I'm stopping.